Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, it's been a little while since I've made one of these uh, videos. Um, I've been really flat out at work, um, leading a really massive project, so I had to take a bit of a breather. And um, I thought I'd come back and start making some new videos for you guys and realized that I had about 600 <laughs> subscribers up from the last time I checked was only about 200 odd. So um, that's really awesome. Um, so that's got me motivated to make some new videos for you guys. So uh, if you're new, my name's Andrew. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. And sorry, it's been so long. <laughs> um, so I thought what I'd do is um, I'm going to try and keep my videos a little bit shorter. So um, in this little kind of mini series, I'm going to be going through how to texture more for like gaming. It's totally related to VFX as well. Um, but we're going to be doing like kind of a, a staple of texturing, which is texturing a weapon. Um, in this case, it's just a, a free model that I found off CG Trader of like an AK, uh, I forget what they're called, 103 or something like that. Um, and I'm going to go through kind of from scratch um, and build it all the way up rather than just dissecting something that I've already made um, so that you guys can kind of get an idea of my thought process as I build up materials and just my general workflow and approach to an asset. So um, yeah, here we go. So the first thing, I'll put the link to the artist who made the original model um, and the CG Trader link up here somewhere for you. Um, so if you guys want to like download the model and follow along at home, um, you can. Um, so let's start. So the first thing is of this is the model here and I've got it open in Maya and I've already had kind of a quick look at this in um, Substance just to see if I need to clean anything up and there's a few things that we need to clean up mainly like just normals um, can see the normals are a bit soft here. Um, it's triangulated which is not um, ideal but not too much of a problem and we've got a big chunk of geometry here that's all combined that I would prefer is separated um, so I can generate like per shape IDs in substance using the ID bake so so let's just clean the geometry up first and then we'll jump into substance painter so all I'm going to do with this is just select everything and we're going to go set to face just to reset all the normals you can see everything's faceted again and i'm going to be really lazy and just go soften harden edges and i've got my angle set to 60 degrees so i'll soften harden edges you can see that's already better this is soft that's hard edged that's soft Soft, that looks much better. Okay, cool. Let's now um, quadrangulate this thing. Um, where is it? Quadrangulate. There we go. Cool, that's better. And I'm just going to separate all the shapes apart. Hopefully, it's not too bad. Separate. Yeah, perfect. Cool. All right, so that's good to export. Um, so I can just do that. Export selection is however you like, Alembic, OBJ, FBX. Um, and we'll jump over to Substance Painter. Dunk. So I'm gonna go File New. And um, as I've talked about in kind of my previous videos, I've got my own template that I start with. Um, because this is only a single UV tile, I'm not going to go over like UDIM stuff uh, for this asset. It's just kind of like this will be applicable for gaming and VFX. Um, I'm going to leave this turned on anyway. It doesn't make any difference. We're going to select our geometry, um, which is the cleaned up one. And here we are. Okay. So step one is let's bake all the data maps out um, so my settings for this are pretty much going to be standing except for under id 
I'm going to set this to mesh ID polygroup. I'm going to set it to random. And what this will do is take every shape and give it its own unique color. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is change curvature from per vertex to per pixel. And let's bake that out. Kind of see it churning away. All right, single UDIM, very quick, lovely. So let's just take a quick look at the data map. So normals, we don't have any high res sculpt to go off of. So um, world space normals looks fine. Here is the random color ID per shape that I was talking about before, which is why you want to kind of separate the shapes in Maya before you start. This will come in handy later on, which I will um, get into down the track. Uh, ambient occlusion looks okay. It's kind of a little bit low res, but that's fine. Curvature, it's not too bad. There's a couple of kind of triangulated marks here and there. That could be better. Um, I should mention as well that this model is not subdividable. Um, so we're going to work with it as is in this, this case. Uh, position looks fine. Thickness looks fine. All right. Looks like we're good to start. So before I do anything, um, I gather reference. So I've already been to the interwebs and I've got pure ref here with a handful of images I found of similar guns. Um, and I've got a mixture here. Um, so there's a couple of things I like to do when I'm collecting reference and that's kind of broad. Um, so different lighting environments, it doesn't necessarily matter if it's exactly the same gun or not. Um, but basically broad, um, broad reference in different lighting conditions, which is kind of important. You don't want a bunch of references that are all in studio lit environments because then as soon as you go and see how it looks outside, like you might have tuned your materials too shiny or too rough, or it's better to get a um, an overview. Um, and then different kind of weathering levels. So we've got, um, yeah, this one's kind of like uh, newish but oldish. Yeah, you can see there's like not much scratches, just the finger marks and things. Um, this one's like a completely different flavor of um, the, the stock and the barrel and all that gear. This one looks like it's definitely been used, which is a bit scary. Um, yeah, just kind of black. This one's kind of quite different to our model, but it's good because it shows just pure kind of black with some weathering and there's some marks and stuff like that. So that's still useful. This one is still useful. It kind of shows a different material with the, the stock and then the, the metal here. And then there's some like interesting weathering stuff happening there. Just someone's, someone's gun just sitting on the carpet. It's crazy. Um, yeah, so lots of different references here that we can, we can use. So in Pure Ref, I'm gonna put that up in the corner and I will we'll start with the cleanest looking image um maybe not that one maybe this one that's fine and we're just going to work out like what what level of weathering do we want for this so is it new is it old is it like really old like vintage kind of style is it dirty is it dusty is it oily all that kind of gear so we could kind of free ball this a little bit because I don't really have too much in mind for the the actual final output. I'm just going to kind of wing it as we go. Um, but we can aim to say like there's elements of these that I that I prefer over others. So I think like the wooden stock and the wooden handle maybe or maybe we can have a newer handle. Um, but definitely we can see like this part of the mesh is is a modern piece or well, this isn't so maybe we'll make this part wood we'll keep this part modern 
uh, maybe we can go the wooden handle and a wooden stock rather than like a modern one like this. Um, could have some nice contrast between a metal stock here and a wooden, um, like the, the metal M piece here in the wooden stock here. So, um, so let's try that. So basically I like to start basically as broad as possible, like broad, broad strokes before I get into any detailing. It is, it is way too easy in Substance Painter to jump right in and go into very detailed materials very quickly. Like it's a really good thing, but it's also not so good um, for kind of, I guess, maybe newer artists who don't understand the control and the, the kind of setup that you need um, later down the track to say like accommodate client notes or um, you know supervisor feedback and that kind of thing and you can trip yourself up and when I first started using Substance I've definitely fallen into this trap as well so um, start simple don't start complex complexity comes through um, working your way through the asset and through repetition all that kind of fun stuff but um, so what I'm going to do just to start with is I like to put a base layer down um, that's got at least every channel filled so I know when I cycle through there's nothing that's empty that's just something I like to do you don't need to do that but um, it's just something I like to do and um, first, thing, first thing is I'm going to sort out the material separation. So we've got metal and we've got wood, basically, um, and paint. So three materials. So I'm going to make three folders. I'm going to call this uh, metal, paint, and wood. Okay, and um, something I will show you guys as well, which has kind of become sort of my like standard workflow. I refer to this as like nested masking. Um, so I tend to have like a mask folder where I can dive down and have like um, better control um, over anchoring masks and referencing them back in higher up so um, I'll get into that more as we kind of dive in a bit further but I'll just make a mask folder for now um all right so metal this will be the metal under the paint um, so you can see where it's like kind of scratched I'll just put something in place for that um, so I'm going to pull up the shelf and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to not use any smart materials for this asset. Let's build everything from scratch. Um, I've got no idea what these things are made from. So I'm just going to start with like iron raw. No, that is way too lumpy, isn't it? Um, let's have a look. Uh, steel rough. What does that guy look like? uh still too much detail to start with i want something more boring than that let's have a look and brushed all right you know what let's not do this because they're all too detailed let's start really flat Metal with kind of roughness, uh, not too shiny. I'm just going to call this base metal. Set the ID to black for the moment. And yes, okay, that's fine for now. Let's move on to the next one, which is paint. So base paint. Um, obviously, it's kind of dark. I'm not going to worry about any secondary mats for the moment. I'm just going to get really broad tones happening. Uh, something like that. That's fine. And wood. So, uh, wood, base. Um, just set a really rough color. 
color here. Good enough. Okay. All right, cool. So we've got wood, we've got paint, and we've got metal. So they're the three primary material types we can focus on for the moment. I'm not going to worry about dirt or dust or any of those finer detail things just yet. It's it's much, much, much too early to think about that stuff. All righty. So let's start thinking about the material separation and how we're going to do this. So there are a couple of ways we could do this. We could use the IDs that we've generated um, or we can use traditional masking. So I think I'm just going to go with traditional masking just for the moment, um, just to keep it simpler. So I'm going to use um, object selection um, for the polygon fill tool. I'm going to use a paint layer. I don't want to do this up here because um, when I start creating masks and putting them in under here, I want to be able to control the blending mode. So I'm going to keep this as a paint layer. So um, we want that guy to be wood. We want this guy to be wood and that guy to be wood. Is there anything over this side? There's a little bolt there, but that's fine. Um, pretty straightforward. Yep, okay. So yeah, really basic at the moment. Um, let's just get those colors a bit tighter. You can always, um, with Pure Ref, if you've got it open, you can click and hold the color selector and then you can just select like straight off the image, which is cool. Um, so you could do that, just pull it down. Don't want it quite that saturated just yet, but yeah, look, that's that's totally fine for now. So I'm just going to save at this point because I've got the core kind of foundation set up. All right, so now that we've saved, um, let's start. So most, I assume like most of you will be like, well, let's add all the edgy stuff on the metal and da, 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 da. So I reckon that's still too quick to jump into at this point. So let's, let's just focus on this metal material first. Um, so in our reference, how new do we want this? Well, it, I think this is probably a good place to start. It's kind of not brand new, but it's not too old and we can always add more to this. If we start to bat it up, it becomes difficult to make it newer if we had to. So let's start here. So looking at kind of this is a really broad example of what we're aiming for. It's probably a good place to start. So let's, let's start there. So we jump to our paint and we've got base paint. All right. So I think what we'll do, let's make the base paint a little bit shinier. I'm just gonna set my camera to free so I can angle it kind of the same. And let's just blur the background so it's not too distracting while we're on an angle here. All right. Cool. So let's maybe let's add this pitting bump detail first, just so it's not so flat. That'll help us do the specular roughness um, in a second. So I'm just going to call this like pitting. Um, now I'm only going, I only really want the height channel for this. So I'm going to hold alt and click on height and that will automatically remove all the other channels. Um, and then just while I'm setting up the mask, I'm just going to make it red so I can see what I'm doing. I like to color my layers very clearly so I can see what I'm doing and then just disable the um, diffuse later on. So I'm going to add a fill layer and I'm going to go to the shelf. 
And let's have a look at what procedurals we could use for this. Um, I know there's a couple of spotty things like this. Grunge shavings, grunge spots. Maybe this one, grunge spots dirty. So let's drag that in over here. Okay. And just talk that a bit more. A little bit smaller. Don't want to tile it so much so it looks repeaty. Um, that's probably okay for the moment. Actually, I might enable gruffness just so we can have those um, those indents a little a little bit rougher. Okay, so just push them in slightly and turn that off. Sort of, yeah. Not too bad, a little bit strong. Let's just pull it back a touch. And maybe let's keep the color on, but we'll just, just keep it like that, just so I can see, yeah, just so I can see what's happening for the now. I might come back and disable this later on. Oops. Uh, oh. Yes, that's fine. All right. So you can see that um, the pitting has like breached onto the, the wood. So um, the reason for that is because the height, the folder is still set to add. So just set that to normal. And now the masking will only apply, uh, like this layer will overwrite this. Um, so yes, that's okay. Um, it's still very strong. Okay, the roughness is maybe too much. Okay, that's kind of it's okay for the moment. We'll come back to it. It's just to get something in there. Yeah, that's okay. All right, now I'm just going to add um, a very basic roughness. So I'll just call this rough noise. And I think um, let's put, uh, what's it called, galvanic, yeah, let's put one of these guys on here, roughness, all right, um, so I'm just going to set the scale of what I want, so I just want something really broad, nothing too detailed to start with, um, yep, yeah, something like that is fine. And now I'm going to set the levels. So setting the levels of the roughness just to get the ranges in check. Obviously, this is still zero to one, so it's very strong. Um, so the way I like to do this is by setting a levels, set the channel to roughness so we can see that's the range. I'll clamp it and we'll say the shiniest I want this to go is probably like about there. And I'm going to pull this down so that the roughest point for this particular noise is something. Hmm. Something about there. Yeah, it was probably good enough for the moment. We could pull it a little bit further. You can kind of see how I <laughs> how I tune these things. Like you just jiggle the sliders until you find something that you know you're you're happy with. See, so we don't want it too contrasty. Um, just something, something subtle, just to start with. Okay, yeah, that's that's fine. Now, um, let's add just to get a touch more detail into the roughness. I think what I want to do, because there's still lots of subtlety that's happening in there. Let's add 
one more. Um, so I'm just going to copy and paste this layer just to give me a, a head start. And let's find a higher frequency noise to use. So I'm going to look through grunges and something kind of high frequency to mimic what's happening here. Um, yes, let's try that. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. Higher frequency. Yeah, cool. So you can kind of see like what I'm trying to achieve here is like getting a bit of this. Now what's happening at the moment is that this layer is overriding this layer. So what we could do is look to blend it um, with either a mask or just like the blending mode itself. So I'm going to switch the channel selection to roughness and um, I'm going to switch the view to roughness as well so I can see what's happening. Let's try, say, soft light. No, maybe not. Play. I can try just adding them together. It's going to get a bit rough, but we can always adjust it afterwards. Yeah, look, it's doing the right thing, but it's gone way too rough. But it look, the look is okay. The look is okay. And that's cool because we can come back and fix that. So let's pull this down and pull this. You can kind of see, you can kind of see what that's doing in add mode. The more I add, it's going to get rougher. But that's kind of cool, right? Like that's sort of what we want. So Yeah, okay, yeah, that's that's got some high frequency stuff. It's a little bit rough for my liking without any dirt or dust or anything on it yet, because as soon as you add that, this is going to get really dirty. So what we could do is pull this pass down a bit as well. You can kind of see what's happening there. We want a little bit of that variation, but not too much and then the base layer let's pull this down even further oh of course because my roughness is still sitting that high set this to add and let's set this even lower yeah cool that's giving us some interesting results Yeah, cool. So you can kind of see like, yeah, this is um, a lot of this is just exploration and trial and error um, for, you know, what looks good. But yeah, that's that's OK. That's OK. What I'm actually going to do, I like what's happening with this noise pattern. I'm going to use that higher up, but going to do this. So I'm going to put this back to normal and I'm going to set this a little bit rougher, a bit more contrasty. I'm going to mask this in with some dirt. I think that would look cool. Dirt. Yeah. And let's just, so you can kind of see what's happening there. We're using our um, dirt mask to kind of isolate those areas. So yeah, cool. Starting to get some shape in there, but nothing too crazy just yet. Yeah, that's a okay start. It needs a lot more work, but um, yes, I'm going to try and keep these videos under half an hour and we've got about one minute left. So in the next lesson, what we'll do is we'll continue on with the metal um, and get the base foundation of that um, nice and solid before we continue too much 
more into the masking um, procedure and how we isolate the materials even further and start getting some finer detail stuff. So uh, let's leave it there for the moment. Um, and hopefully next weekend, um, we'll look to pick this back up again and continue. I don't know how many lessons it's gonna take to do this. Um, normally, if this was like a production asset for VFX and it was a replacement and shot, you'd want at least a good couple of days for texturing, let alone shading and that kind of thing. So, but for half an hour, um, this is okay from scratch. And like I said, we're not going to use smart materials and we're not going to use um, even like base materials if we can avoid it just so we can build everything from scratch and you can see how I approach this stuff. But um, yeah, so lesson one. All right. Thanks for tuning in again. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.